One acre of this crop can fix over 100 pounds of nitrogen, field livestock all summer, and rebuild topsoil faster than anything else we've tested. It grows faster than sorghum and stays lush in heat that burns other legumes out. You're looking at sun hemp, the tropical forage now reshaping southern grazing systems. While most pastures dry out by July, this one hits its growth peak at 100 degrees, and every time it's mowed, it pays you twice, once in forage and again in soil fertility. Get it right and you'll cut feed costs by hundreds per acre. Get it wrong and the seed bill hits your savings. But before you buy seed, know this, a few wrong steps can turn a promising forage into an expensive green mess. Let's look at what actually works. Sun hemp, Crotillaria jensi, isn't hemp at all. It's a fast-growing lagoon, originally from India, bred for biomass and nitrogen, not for fiber or oil. It doesn't just survive heat, it uses it. Photosynthesis ramps up as the thermometer climbs, making it one of the few legumes that grows faster in August than in May. It grows best in USDA Zone 7 through 11, on any well-drained soil. In a normal southern summer, it can reach 6 to 10 feet tall in just 60 to 90 days. That's 4 to 6 tons of dry matter per acre, faster than millet or cowpea, with a root system that drives 3 feet deeper. Unlike most legumes, sun hemp keeps fixing nitrogen during the hottest part of the season. That means while pastures are drying up, this plant is still pulling fertility out of thin air. For uh, northern growers, it's more of a short season cover, a 60-day burst between spring harvest and fall seeding. But for the southern farms, it's one of the most efficient ways to turn summer heat into usable feed and organic matter. Crude protein tests as high as alfalfa, but here's the difference. It doesn't need irrigation or fertilization to get there. Cut or graze between 40 and 60 days, that's when it tests around 18 to 22 percent crude protein and 60 to 65 percent total digestible nutrients, right on par with mid grade alfalfa. The mineral balance fits goats and sheep almost perfectly. Before 40 days, it's sugary and ideal for milkers and lambs. Past 70 days, protein drops fast and stems turn to wood. Cattle walk away. That's the razor's edge. Cut too early and you waste yield. Wait too long and you've grown fence posts. Most producers find day 55 to 60 is the sweet spot. In Auburn University trials, goats grazing a 50-50 mix of sun hemp and grass gain weight equal to those on alfalfa hay. Milk butter fat ticked up slightly, likely from the better mineral profile. A Florida beef trial found steers gained 1.4 pounds per day on sun hemp sorghum mix compared to 1.1 pounds on grass alone, a 25% improvement in feed conversion. So it's not a hay replacement, it's a short-term, high-protein supplement best used to stretch existing forage or replace grain during the summer slump. For mixed herbs, goats and sheep thrive on it. Cattle benefit most when it's part of a diverse grazing rotation. That's where it outperforms almost every other summer lagoon, by feeding the soil microbes that drive next season's fertility. While the top growth feeds animals, the roots rebuild structure. One summer crop fixes roughly 100 to 120 pound in per acre, about 75 to 100 dollars in fertilizer value, and adds nearly two tons of root biomass that fuels soil microbes and frees locked up minerals. In University of Florida field trials, soils rotated with sun hemp showed a 25% increase in soil organic carbon compared to fallow plots in just two seasons. Soil bulk density dropped by 10% and infiltration rates rose 15 to 20%, meaning every inch of rainfall soaked deeper instead of running off. That means every summer storm sinks deeper instead of running off, turning flash floods into stored moisture. Because sun hemp's biomass breaks down quickly, often within three to four weeks after mowing, those nutrients cycle fast. Instead of waiting months for residue to decompose, the next crop gets a pulse of available nitrogen and organic acids almost immediately. That makes it especially effective before fall planted grains, cover mixes, or market vegetables. Unlike clover or vetch, which, which feeds soil slowly over winter, sun hemp releases fertility right when microbial activity is still peaking, the perfect handoff between summer growth and fall planting. Miss the window and you'll know it. Germination stalls, 
weeds take over, and you'll wonder why your neighbor's field hits six feet while yours barely ankle high. Soil temperature must hold above 65 degrees Fahrenheit for consistent germination. Seed 25 to 40 pounds per acre, drilled or broadcast about half to three quarters of an inch deep. It, it germinates fast. You'll see sprouts within 48 hours, knee high by day 30, and shoulder high by day 60. Every week you wait after that, digestibility drops by nearly 1% per day. Small delays, big losses. Seed runs $2.50 to $3 a pound, so your total cost lands around $75 to $90 per acre with no fertilizer required. For forage, graze or cut between 40 to 60 days when protein and digestibility peak. After that, stems turn woody and lignin jumps, cutting digestibility in half for cattle. Goats and sheep will still browse it, but yield value drops sharply. In humid regions, dense stands can trap moisture, mow or rotationally graze to prevent stem rot. In heavy clay or compacted soils, nodulation often fails unless inoculated. Use the correct rhizobium strain, IC3125, to unlock full nitrogen fixation potential. Managed right, sun hemp doesn't just produce forage. It turns a midsummer gap into a fertility cycle, rebuilding soil while feeding livestock at the same time. When you run the numbers, sun hemp's economics speak for themselves. Total cost runs about $100 per acre. Seed, fuel, and labor. No fertilizer, no irrigation. In return, an acre of sun hemp produces between four and six tons of dry matter worth roughly four to six hundred dollars in hay equivalent. Add another hundred dollars in nitrogen credit from what it fixes back into the soil and you're looking at a total return of five to seven hundred dollars per acre. That's a four to six times payback, even if you never bale a single stalk, just graze and mow. In real terms, that's turning a one hundred dollar bill into six hundred dollars worth of feed and fertility in 60 days. Faster ROI than almost any crop you can plant without equipment. On southern goat and sheep farms, producers report feed costs dropping by as much as 20 to 30 percent when sun hemp replaces grain concentrate through the hot months. It's why southern goat farms are calling it their summer paycheck crop. And the real value compounds each year. Every time you grow it, you build fertility that reduces next season's fertilizer bill while leaving your soil structure stronger and more biologically active. So it's not just a short-term forage crop, it's a long-term fertility investment that pays in both feed and soil. Sun hemp is the bridge between summer heat and fall recovery, the link most rotational systems miss. After a small grain harvest, bare ground can lose a season's worth of carbon and nitrogen in just a few weeks of heat and rain. But a quick seeding of sun hemp locks that fertility in place shades the soil and converts excess heat into biomass that feeds what comes next. Here's where it really earns its keep. Between seasons, when your soil is usually baking bare, the plant fits seamlessly into regenerative rotations. It grows aggressively after spring crops, uh, then decomposes just in time for cool season covers or cash crops to take over. Paired with glasses like a uh, millet or Sudan grass, it stays upright and balanced. The grass adds carbon, the legumes adds nitrogen, and together they decompose evenly without nutrient loss. That partnership mirrors what healthy ecosystems do naturally, balance energy and nutrients without synthetic inputs. Field trials comparing traditional fallow to a grain sun hemp grazing rotation showed 40% higher microbial respiration and 10% lower soil compaction after just one year. In orchids and agroforestry systems, it doubles as a living mulch. Mowed before flowering, it feeds fungal networks and improves infiltration under the canopy. Used this way, sun hemp turns a gap season into a living cycle, producing forage, protecting soil, and feeding the next crop in one continuous motion. Sun hemp isn't bulletproof. It thrives in heat but collapses in cold. Once temperatures fall below about 45 degrees, growth stops immediately and a single frost will finish the stand. That means it performs best in zones 7 through 11 and only marginally in cooler regions. In low-lying, 
or poorly drained ground, you'll see yellow leaves and weak nodulation. It simply can't breathe in saturated soil. Periods of heavy rain followed by high humidity often bring stem rot or leaf spot. So airflow and drainage matter as much as fertility. Timing is another weak spot. If you let the stand flower before mowing or grazing, crude protein drops by half and the stems lignify into wood. At that point, it's better left as mulch than used for feed. And like most high protein legumes, it demands gradual introduction for livestock. Let animals adapt over several days or risk digestive upset and bloat. Across the Southern East, the numbers tell a consistent story. In USDA field trials in Alabama, Sun hemp produced nearly 6,000 pounds of dry matter per acre, fixed 118 pounds of nitrogen, and lifted subsequent cornfields by about 15% without a single pound of added fertilizer. In Georgia comparisons, soil microbial biomass rose 35% after just two rotations. When combined with sorghum, total system carbon inputs nearly doubled compared to bare summer fallow. These results aren't outliers. They repeat year after year in different soils and climates. Every season you grow sun hemp, your soil becomes slightly darker, more stable, and more alive. It's one of the rare crops that builds both feed and fertility at once. Measurable regeneration you can see in every handful of soil. Sun hemp isn't a miracle crop, and it doesn't need to be. It's a high-speed fertility engine, a simple way to keep your soil biology working through the heat when most fields go quiet. For warm zone farms with livestock, one acre can feed, fertilize, and rebuild in the same season. You grow it once, graze it twice, and by the time the season ends, your feed bill's lighter and your soil's darker. That's regeneration that pays for itself. So, would you trial sun hemp on your farm this summer? Or have you already? Drop your zone below. We'll compare results and build a map of where it performs best. And if you want more regenerative systems that produce, not just theory, subscribe and stay tuned.